Panse, my name is Ashley Collingbull, and I'm proud to be Plains Cree from Enoch Cree Nation in Treaty 6 territory. For a lot of my life, a lot of the things that I've had to chase, they weren't open to me because I'm an Indigenous woman, whether that be acting or modeling. And I've been told that, you know, Indigenous people aren't relatable, so we're not going to cast you, which is such a crazy thing to hear. And now that times are changing and things are becoming more inclusive, it's been, you know, too long. Like, it took too long to get to this point. Just I really had to push myself. And, you know, whatever space that I'm in, it's so important to share the true education about Indigenous people so they don't have this stereotype on me on set or they don't have this belief that, you know, they're going to call me Pocahontas and make all these references because, you know, that's really ignorant thing to say and, and it's offensive. So for me, I always take the opportunity to educate people. I feel like a lot of the things that I've accomplished in my life, I wouldn't have been able to if I didn't have that strength in my culture. You know, I'm extremely proud to be an Indigenous woman, to be Plains Cree from Treaty 6 territory, and to accomplish the things that I have done, and to have the other Indigenous youth see what I'm doing. For me, I'm just trying to pave the way. So my Indigenous pride is something that I carry with me everywhere that I go, and I want everyone else to be proud of their heritage as well, because it's beautiful. my culture really shaped me because I had this thing like I'm gonna prove myself. I didn't have anyone empowering me. I had to empower myself and you know once I pushed myself and I accomplished something I thought what else can I do next? You know I just had this spark in me as a young girl. Me and my mom we were living in a bad situation with a man who was abusing both of us and eventually when we did escape when he wasn't around we went back to my reserve where we're originally from to live with my grandparents and once that happened because my grandparents are healers they're medicine man and medicine woman they taught me that my culture was going to save my life and it did my grandmother she told me that you know my culture is my strength she told me to stay on the red road and in our way that's staying away from drugs and alcohol she described to me that the more you put those negative toxins into your body, the more your spirit gets disconnected from you and that's how we get lost. And then we make bad decisions. I don't want my you know, future children to suffer the way that I did. I had to grow up really fast because of what happened to me, but because of the attitude that I had and the self-love and learning to you know, stay away from toxicity, I pushed myself so far. And for me, it's all about taking people along with me as well, because yes, I may be the first and a bunch of different things, but it's so important that I'm not the last. Inapi Gasu, Tapskikia, Rachel. I want one. My cousin believes you just have to earn it the old fashioned way. I just have a series that's coming out right now called Tribal. I'm also working on another series I can't talk about yet. And then I'm going to be doing a lot more campaigns, whether that be with RW and Co, Nike, Dress for Success. I'm an ambassador for all these different organizations. So, you know, that's really exciting. But another big thing in my life is I'm going to be writing my first book with Harper Collins. So that's a really uh, exciting moment for me to be able to share the truth and share everything from my point of view and to help women and to give back as much as I possibly can. The tribal is, uh, a lot of it is indigenous cast, indigenous stories. So I think that's really powerful because you rarely see that. And with it, it's also a crime show. So they focus on a lot of things that have been dealt with in the reserve or the city life. And for my character, it's based around murdered and missing indigenous women, which is, you know, a huge issue in Canada and the US. And I feel that, you know, I'm really thankful to be part of a show that's going to address these issues because a lot of times the media pushes it aside. And because we're not women who are white, it's harder to get the attention that you deserve. And I just want people to know that, you know, our lives are important. You know, we are worth being searched for. That's why it's so important for me to use my voice because, you know, having this platform, use your voice as much as possible because it can really resonate with a lot of people. You can reach a lot of people for help and also people can reach out to you. 
speaking as a granddaughter of two residential school survivors, you know, I know the toll it has taken on them, especially with the media releasing that there's been a lot of unmarked graves at these schools. And, you know, my grandfather, he got up and walked to his room and he, he can not watch TV anymore. That's how much it still affects him. The last school just closed in 1996 in Canada. So I could have went to residential school. So, you know, a lot of people don't realize that people who have dealt with, you know, being in residential school and leaving, a lot of them have turned to addictions, a lot of them have mental health issues, and a lot of this becomes intergenerational trauma. And it's all about really stopping that cycle. And with me, that stops here. But what I really want is, you know, our government to stop fighting these survivors, these people who went to these schools, stop fighting them because, you know, we do move forward in a way where we can take our lives back, take our control back. I think it's so important that people see the truth because that's what these residential schools were implemented for. They were to take the culture away, to kill the Indian is what they called it. And they wanted to civilize us. And I'm the only reason I'm here is because they survived those schools. So when you see an Indigenous person, next time you look at them, you know, think that they may be dealing with intergenerational trauma, they may be dealing with things that the government, the system has thrown at them. So you never know, we never had it easy and we still don't. And I think that's you know, one thing that people really need to be educated on is that we don't have it easy. We're still fighting every day.